Capturing Images for Photogrammetry When creating a photogrammetry composition, you have to take many different photos from many different angles. In this video, we're going to explore methods on how to obtain quality images for photogrammetry work. This will involve a basic run-through of applying the elements of composition into your 3D work. The goal of this video is to lay out some tips and guidelines that you should consider. But the guidelines are just that, guidelines. They're not rules, so feel free to experiment as you please. That being said, let's start taking photos. The amount of images you'll have to capture depends on the complexity of the subject. For instance, a small rock may require less source images than a large and detailed building. To create a good 3D model, it's important to understand your subject. As you approach the subject, or your scene, it's ideal to formulate a plan of action. First, you'll want to observe the textures. Photogrammetry software relies on identifying patterns of pixels in your images. For this reason, it's important to have subjects that have detailed textures. You might be wondering what this looks like, so I'll show an example here. You see, this stone wall has lots of little cracks and specks of different colored sediment. It's filled with rocky detail. This white wall, on the other hand, has very little detail, and it would be difficult to effectively scan this. You see, as humans, we're really good at identifying objects and depth in relation to textures and materials. We have two eyes and brains that process all of this information and connects it with our contextual memories and experiences about those objects. So just overall, we've got a ton of information about what we're looking at. Computer software, on the other hand, doesn't have any of that. It's all much more abstract math and programming. So we have to understand how a computer interprets data is a lot different than the way we do. Next, we're going to observe materials. By observing the material of a subject, we can determine whether or not it's scannable. For instance, this rock has a rough, flat, and dull material. The rough, detailed texture of the rock makes it an ideal subject because its features are consistent and they don't change as the camera moves its position. This glass, on the other hand, is glossy and filled with reflection. The glass reflection is being interpreted in a similar way to how our software looks at a mirror. It thinks there's some kind of geometric detail where there isn't. It's in the flares of light and the sparkling caustic qualities of the glass. As you move your camera, the subject is actively changing. A subject that changes its appearance as you photograph it is not effectively scannable. This is because the pixels are changing and the photogrammetry software can no longer match pixel patterns between images. Next, we're going to observe the complexity of the geometry. Everything in our world is very detailed, and some things are more complex than others. There's currently a limit to the level of detail that cameras can capture and that computers can process. Going back to the rock example, a rock is very scannable because it has a simple shape, it's solid and decently sized. On the other hand, foliage, strands of grass, leaves, and hair are too thin. Scanning thin objects is very challenging without a special setup. These type of thin and lightweight objects are also very prone to getting caught in the wind, so they're actively moving. Now, we have to also consider the lighting in the scene. Try to get in the habit of observing how light travels. See the patches of light on the fourth floor and how they shift and move. Consider motion as well. Wind affects leaves, which cast shadows, which in turn can create a subject that changes. Photogrammetry is best done in low contrast lighting. Scanning a subject in shade where the lighting conditions are more evenly spread out will yield good results. An overcast day is ideal for this. Now let's say you want to scan something on a partially cloudy but sunny day. The clouds may be moving in the wind, and the sun is shining in and out every few minutes. This would create change in your photogrammetry subject, as the lighting would be actively changing. This could cause inconsistent lighting on your 3D model, or make it not scannable at all. In this example, we have a subject with high dynamic contrast and one with low contrast. 
As you can see, the shadows are underexposed and the highlights are overexposed. This means that we're losing important details about the shape of this model. For all the computer knows, the highlights are flat, like paper. In the low contrast image, there's no lost detail and there's very balanced lighting. Photographers love taking pictures during early morning sunrise and sunset. This is called the golden hour, or after sunset is typically referred to as the blue hour. While having orange or bluish casts of light in the environment is visually beautiful, it can make it more challenging to create a usable scan, and here's why. During these hours, shadows are much more accentuated and stretched. For photogrammetry, these periods of time can cause high dynamic contrast and colored subjects, which can cause difficulty while you're scanning. A rule of photographing for photogrammetry is that stillness is necessary. You cannot have independently moving or changing subjects without reducing the quality of the scan. Now, once we've established whether or not the subject is scannable, let's figure out an angle of approach. This is essentially observing the geometry and breaking down our subject into manageable chunks that we can focus on. This will enable us to understand how we can get the most coverage with our images. Each image we capture should have decent overlap. We need to make sure each image overlaps at least 60%. This means that the details carry over between images. For a subject like this, it's easy enough to take pictures walking around the subject while keeping the camera pointed toward the center. Different subjects require different angles of approach, so plan accordingly. Now, it's time to start taking photos. Just make sure that your camera is set to a specific exposure that allows the subject to be decently well lit, not overexposed, which means too bright, or underexposed, which means too dark. Remember, the more photos you use, the longer it's going to take to process. Typically, for a basic subject, you don't need as many photos as you think. Just try to make sure the camera is positioned in a way where you get enough coverage in each image. The more photos you take, the more detail you can achieve. And this is ultimately learned through actually doing it. I can sit here and explain to you as much as I can about how to get the best coverage for your subjects, but you really just have to go out there and start taking photos, and then you're going to be able to gauge those requirements yourself. I've left a link in the description to some resources on getting started with taking manual photography. It's something I won't be covering in this series very extensively and will only be briefly mentioning. The one manual photography thing to keep in mind is to make sure that your shutter speed is sufficient enough to not cause motion blur in your images. This will make it very difficult for your photogrammetry software to pick up on those pixel patterns I was mentioning to connect the images together. So try to make sure that your images are at the very least sharp, in focus, and do not have any motion blur. Now once you finish taking the photos, you're going to want to take that SD card out of your camera, stick it into your laptop or computer, and transfer all of those images into a nice folder. In the next video, we're going to be taking all of those images and processing them into a 3D model. Consider subscribing to my channel to stay updated on the latest creative videos and feel free to comment to tell me what you think or if you have any questions. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you learned something today or found it beneficial.